Welcome guys back to another episode of Arsenal Transfer News Daily. We are back again with another episode and we've got lots of news so we're going to get straight into it. First of all, Lionel Messi, he will be leaving Barcelona. He has reportedly told the hierarchy that he wants to leave and apparently due to his free clause he may be allowed to leave for free but that release, that free clause did expire so there's going to be a bit of a legal case in this but if he is allowed to leave for free should Arsenal swoop in? <laughs> oh my god that sounds so funny. Okay. If we sign Messi, I, I'm willing to do any dare in the comment section down below. Literally, I will do any dare because Lionel Messi will not end up at Arsenal. But why not? Why not? Oh, come on. We need a number 10, don't we? I'll put this in my community tab the other night so you guys can leave your thoughts in the comment section of that community tab. But my God, if we can have Lionel Messi at Arsenal, that would be huge. Imagine that. Messi at Arsenal. Oh, come on. Oh, keep dreaming. Nothing wrong with dreaming, is there? Nothing wrong with dreaming. But wow, it would be such a brilliant move. Can a Lionel Messi at Arsenal. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, but enough of the dreaming. Let's get straight into the Arsenal transfer news daily. First of all, the big news is on Alexandre Lacazette. Now, Atletico Madrid and Juventus have shown an interest in the plan. Apparently, the reports today suggesting that Atletico Madrid are willing to offer us a three a three stars of theirs to Arsenal for Alexandre Lacazette swap deal. Lacazette has been in and out of Arsenal's side under Mikel Arteta and could be sold to raise funds while Atletico are keen to take in the player to Spain. Atletico Madrid are reportedly prepared to offer one of their three players to Arsenal in part exchange for forward Alexandre Lacazette. The Lille Liga giants are interested in signing the Frenchman this summer, but financing a straight cash deal could prove difficult. Arsenal are keen on landing Atletico Madrid uh, star Thomas Partey, but he's not one of the players Diego Simeone. Uh, is willing to let go to bring Lacazette to the club. In my opinion, that sounds a bit weird because if Lacazette's um, sort of price is around 30 to 40 million pounds and Topaz Party's release clause is around 43 million pounds, why can't we just do the swap deal? I, I, I don't get why Atletico Madrid wouldn't want to do that. It seems really weird, but apparently this is what this report is suggesting. And according to Marker, Atletico will try and tempt Arsenal into a player plus cash deal by offering any of Thomas Lemar. Angel Correa or Vitolo as part of a swap. Lemar has been monitored by Arsenal previously and the Gunners almost signed the winger in the summer of 2017. Who remembers the 100 million euro bid that came in for Thomas Lemar uh, when he was at Monaco but apparently that bid had been accepted and we were willing to let Laca uh, sorry Sanchez go uh, for 60 million to Man City but then um, Thomas Lemar didn't want to come to Arsenal so do we come do we go back for Thomas Lemar who knows. The 24-year-old has struggled this season, though as he has failed to score a single goal or assist in 29 appearances. Both Correa and Vitolo play in a similar forward role as Lemar and uh, would probably be more attractive options to Arteta. Correa, who is now 25, bagged seven times for Atleti last uh, season, while Vitolo, who is 30 years old, scored on just three occasions. So both all those three players that Atleti have offered, I don't think on the same level as um, Lacazette. And uh, they are saying they're going to offer cash as well. But I think if Atletico want him, just pay the cash or give us Thomas Party in exchange. That's what I would say to that. But Arsenal have rejected the offer back in January, though, and are under no pressure to sell Lacazette, who still has under two years remaining on his current contract. Now, I think um, in terms of Lacazette, we have talked about him a lot in terms of uh, Juventus having an interest. They were offering three players, including Higuain as well, um, and Douglas Costa, I believe, and the one more, uh, Demira, one of the, one of their defenders they were offering in exchange for Lacazette. And now Atletico are offering players as well, because, you know, players, you know, teams don't have that much money to spend, so they are, off, you know, willing to let go some of their players to bring in their key targets now Juventus have been heavily linked with um, Lacazette and I said and if they have to stump up the cash because Arsenal would rather take cash than take any of their players because Arsenal do have their own targets that they do want to go after so again for Lacazette he has two years left on his contract so I think a decision has to be made by Arteta this summer whether uh, we want to let go of Lacazette either offer him a new contract or let him, or you know try and sell him to Atleti or Juventus or try and get some money for him or maybe take one of their players any of the players that have been offered by Juventus, I'm not really interested in. Personally, any of the players that Atleti have just offered, I'm not interested in. We don't need Thomas Lemar anymore. We needed Lemar when he was back at Monaco and when we put the 100 million euro, um, uh, what do you call it, bid for him, which was accepted by um, Monaco. But obviously, I think that was a good decision in the end because Thomas Lemar just hasn't been that good ever since he made that move to uh, Atletico Madrid. Obviously, when we when we signed Alexandre Lacazette, Atleti were in the running and they were actually going to sign 
um, Lacazette. But obviously they had that transfer ban, so Arsenal swooped in and got Lacazette. So La- Lacazette uh, was a you know Arsenal's first choice. You know Lacazette's first choice wasn't Arsenal; it was Atletico Madrid. So maybe he would still be um, open to that move to Spain still. And uh, again, Atleti are in the need for a striker. You know to partner up with Jao Felix, and uh, Juventus are in need of a striker. Imagine that if Messi goes to Juve, he has Messi on the right. Ronaldo on the left and Alexandre Lacazette down the middle. Oh my god. What what, what an upgrade for him. <laughs> that would be so funny if that happens, but I don't see it happen I don't see Messi going to um Juventus, but that would be really cool. <laughs> I imagine that for Alexandre Lacazette, that is funny. But yeah, that is the news that is suggesting that um, Re- uh, Atletico Madrid are willing to offer three of their stars, including Angel Correa, Thomas Lemar and Vitolo in part exchange for Alexandre Lacazette, who Arsenal could be open to letting go this summer. Next bit of news is on Thiago Alcantara. Now, apparently, I actually don't know if these reports are true, which is why I didn't put in the title. And that Ar- Arteta has apparently contacted, called Thiago in a bid to convince him to come to the Emirates. Now, Thiago, obviously, he was uh, influential in the Champions League final win and through their run because you know that pass I was talking about a few days ago that sliced open that PSG midfield you know was a spearhead for that goal gave off to Joshua Kimmich who ended up uh, chipping it over the PSG defence for Coman to put the header into the back of the net now Thiago again a world-class midfielder in my opinion he is very underrated and Again, I'm very torn on this. I'm torn which side to go on this, whether we should get Thiago or we shouldn't get Thiago because on one hand, he's a world-class midfielder and he has one year left on his contract so we could potentially get him on quite a cheap price. You know, Bayern still won around 27 million, but I think we could push that way down because, you know, if Thiago starts agitating a lot, which he, he might start to do, and he has one year left on his contract, which means he might go for nothing next year. So I think this will go. This will drag down a bit. I think that's what Liverpool are trying to do as well. But I think Thiago, he's 29 years old. Next year, he's going to be 30. And I think we should be trying to get someone like Thomas Partey, who is around two, three years younger than um, uh, Thiago. And I think Thomas Partey is probably on the similar level as Thiago. Even though they're quite different players, I think Thiago is more of an attacking player, more of a box-to-box type player, which w- w- are one of our targets. You know, we are trying to look for a box-to-box player like uh, we had for, we had Danny Sabas last year who did play in such a position and, and we've been linked to Asim Awa. You know, Ramsey return we've been linked to and now we're linked to Thiago. Now, Thiago, if he has a choice of choosing between Liverpool and Arsenal, I think he probably will choose Liverpool because, you know, other reports are suggesting he has his heart set on Liverpool that he really wants to join. Again, it'll be very interesting. Again, if he goes, if he if he doesn't come to us, I won't be too mad. If he comes to us, I won't be too mad. I'm I'm sort of on the mid. I'm on the fence with this one on Thiago, and I think uh, he he's quite old. And uh, is he part of a future long term plan, Thiago? I'm not sure, but we do need experience around that team, so maybe he could provide that. Especially, you know, he can make Xhaka a much better player. But we'll have to see what happens with Thiago. We did talk about him a few days ago, so th- so that is the news on Thiago. And apparently, I'm not I'm not saying this is true, but apparently Arteta has contact slash called Thiago in a bid to try and take him to the Emirates state. Next bit of news is on Ainsley Maitland-Niles and apparently Arsenal have rejected a Wolves bid of below £20 million for Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Arsenal have rebuffed the Wolves offer of it, it said here below £20 million, there's no exact um, fee, uh, fee here uh, for a defender Ainsley Maitland now with other clubs uh, apparently from Germany who are also showing up interest and apparently lining up bids. The 22-year-old joined Arsenal's academy at the age of 6 and has risen, risen through the ranks at Haaland Academy, become a key uh, part of Mikel Arteta's first team squad. Despite some early concerns over his work rate and attitude when the ex-Manchester City coach took, uh, first took the job, Maitland now stormed back to pivotal roles in FA Cup, final, FA Cup semi-final and final wins over Man City and then in the final against Chelsea as Arteta plots his summer, uh, summer overhaul there are many in the squad that could make way to raise funds for further incomings the Gunners have a plethora of defenders on their books with Hector Bellerin, Cedric Suarez and the injured Callum Chambers all able to play in the right back position where Maitland Niles has mostly been deployed according to the Athletics David Onstein Wolves have tested the water with an offer below £20 million for Maitland Niles which was swiftly, swiftly rejected but Arsenal as they're looking for a higher price. Other cl- aren't interested parties are circling with two clubs in Germany said to be preparing a, lo- a prepared to bid for the England Youth International. Maitland Niles' versatility is a great asset. You know, I've said this many times. He can play right back, left back, right wing, centre mid. He can play a lot of positions. And despite the rumour surrounding his future, he featured in Arsenal's 4-1 win over MK Dons on Tuesday in the uh, in the first preseason friendly match ahead of the upcoming 2021 campaign. Now, I've said this many times. 
Again, I have no problem with Ainsley Maitland-Niles leaving. I'd rather him stay and we try and sell other players to try and fund moves. But if we do sell him and we end up getting someone like Thomas Partey or we sell him and Hector Bellerin and try and get a new right back because the one reason I don't want to get a Maitland-Niles is that we're going to be stuck with Bellerin. That's one of the reasons I don't want to let Maitland-Niles go and obviously his versatility. But if we sell Bellerin as well, who has been linked to Juventus as well, he's been linked to Paris Saint-Germain, which we did a report yesterday, then I think... He could be bringing in a right back. You know, some right backs have been linked, like Denzel Dumfries. Um, Max Aaron's has been linked. I've talked about him a few times. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens with our right back position. Because going into this window, no one really thought we were going to strengthen in that area, especially when we brought in Cedric Suarez in January. But who knows? We might uh, try and uh, re revitalize that midfield and try and uh, strengthen it up a bit more. We'll have to see what happens. I think. Hopefully this gets sorted out soon, uh, Maitland Niles' future because season's coming and we really need to get some of our targets in. You know, you know, we've only got in Willian and Gabriel looks very, very close and gets closer by the day. But that is the news that Ainsley Maitland Niles has still been linked to Wolves. Apparently there are advanced talks and Arsenal have rejected a bit of under £20 million pounds for Ainsley Maitland Niles. Next bit of news is on Emil Smith Rowe, and apparently he is attracting a lot of interest, including from Monaco, Crystal Palace, and Fulham. Arsenal midfielder Emil Smith Rowe, subject from interest from Monaco, Crystal Palace, and Fulham. The independent understands the 20 year old academy graduate who spent last season on loan at Huddersfield has become a target for several clubs, but any decision on his future will not be made until a later date in the window. Arteta has reintegrated Smith Rowe into the first team squad for pre season after an impressive stint in his favoured number 10 role under Zanny Cowley. However, further incomings at Arsenal are likely to dictate whether he spends another year away. It's unclear whether Arsenal could be tempted to consider a permanent move with Delteta himself saying he was excited to work with Smith Rowe, yet the club are keen to raise funds with firmer incomings. Obviously, he's talked about Ainsley Maitland Niles, he could be fun, you know, could be sold to fund moves. And uh, Leipzig former sporting director Paul Mitchell was keen to sign Smith Rowe again in the summer of 2019. Obviously, he ended up going to Huddersfield instead and playing his trade in the championship. And apparently now uh, the sporting director, that same sporting director is now at Monaco and he's retained his interest and is keen to bring Smith Rowe to Liga permanently. And uh, yeah, that is also, uh, the, apparently there has also been a bid rejected for Smith Rowe. I'm not sure who it's by, but I think in my opinion, we have to keep hold of Smith Rowe. He is a very promising player. I've seen quite a bit of him live and I think we have to hold on to him for another year at least before trying to, um, trying to sell him. In terms of what fee we could get if Arsenal do decide to cash in, I think it'll be in the region of around £15 million. Pounds. But I think, you know, if we keep him for another year, maybe build him up, even if he's not that good enough, he could be better enough and we could sell him for a higher fee for around £25 to 30 million pounds but it'll be very interesting to see what we do with smith throw and i think we should give him a chance he deserves a chance he's been very good and i think uh he needs to get into the arsenal first team squad give him a few matches and see how it goes and then make a decision next year so that is the news that smith throw uh, has been subject of interest from many clubs and apparently a bid has also been rejected for it last bit of news is on said kalazanach now we did talk about i think the other day that he has been you know you know uh, shalka have been linked uh, with a move to him for return to germany and apparently a loan bid was uh, muted uh, from Schalke to try and bring him back. Now, Arsenal do want to let go of Seyad Kalazinac. She hasn't been very good this season, really not done anything. I did uh, properly say my thoughts yesterday, so you guys can check that out yesterday's video if you want more information on that. But apparently, Roma have also um, had some interest in him. In my opinion, this is all good that players actually are, you know, to clear up clubs are actually interested in our players. And I think a lot of interest from Italy is coming for some of our players, which is quite good. You know, Mustafi been linked away for clubs like Roma and Napoli and also uh, Socrates. So we, it'll be very interesting to see if Seyad Klasenac actually leaves. Hopefully we can try and get a permanent deal for him away from the club, some sort of fee and not end up terminating his contract because I think we need to try and get some fees for these players so we can try and um, fund future moves. We've said this all along through this show because you know if we want to get those Thomas Party deals done, even Hasim Awa or even Thiago for um, argument's sake, then we just have to, you know, we have to try and sell some of these players because we're not in the greatest of financial situations. Obviously, make making 55 staff are redundant so that is the news that Kalazanac has been linked with a move to Roma and obviously he's been subject to interest from Schalke on so thank you guys so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed please do like subscribe also later today we're doing our community shield preview for the game on Saturday against Liverpool see how we line up in that game I'll be probably be doing that preview after Arteta's done his press conference just to see a bit more team news who will be available who will be not I think that will give us a better idea and also if Gabriel does sign today there will be an announcement video I am waiting on that so a possible three videos today so stay tuned see you guys in the next one bye bye